Okay, let's explain something that I'm pretty sure that you don't understand. You you kind of have a, a somewhat grasp of it. The EOC custom settings. Now, as I mentioned to you prior, we have to uh, understand uh, several different print because the camera is very stupid. Just like an advanced, super powerful computer, they're all stupid. They need input. They, you know, a camera doesn't know if you're trying to focus on a rabid squirrel in a tree or you know a constipated turtle crossing the road or a bicyclist. You know, you have to give it specific parameters. So let's go over the AOC custom settings. But don't forget, you need to have the set correct autofocus area mode set whether that's single zone or wide tracking and you need to have the correct area set also you need to be in boost mode for maximum performance and also least blackout so now let's go to our third parameters now we have five custom settings and a six which is user programmable uh, right here we actually have multi-purpose You'll notice that each one of these five presets that are locked into the camera have three subcategories, tracking sensitivity, speed tracking sensitivity, okay, and then zone area switching. Here we have ignore obstacles, continue to track the subject. You'll notice that the parameters for each one of these changes, okay suddenly appearing objects, or radically moving objects. Let's go over to six and let's talk about tracking sensitivity. Okay, here we go. What is tracking sensitivity? This is the delay from which the camera loses the subject's autofocus and lets you choose from zero to four how it is that it's going to look for the, the closest uh, point of uh, autofocus. Zero, the far end of the spectrum here, means it's going to immediately look for the closest uh, autofocus point. All the way to the other end of the spectrum means it's going to wait. Say you have a bicyclist going behind a small car or behind a trash can, it's going to wait. If I have it set to zero, this means it's immediately going to look for the closest uh, thing to focus on that was it within that zone. If I've got somebody that's actually zipping in and out of various things, I would choose towards four. The other thing, I want the closest autofocus tracking and I have a sufficient depth of field, I'm going to choose zero or anything in between. Now, speed tracking sensitivity. Okay, here we go. We have zero, one, and two. Speed tracking sensitivity predicts where a subject will be based upon its acceleration. On zero, we're looking for a steady moving object, right? We're going to choose a steady moving object. Let's see that again. Steady moving object. Number two, at the other end of the spectrum, we have a, uh, a subject that is accelerating or decelerating. So this is going to set the speed tracking sensitivity for the autofocus uh, custom setting that you're going to set in the option number six because the first five are presets right Go over here one two three four five and the sixth one that you can set zone area switching zone area switching would be center auto and front this actually sets the uh, switching sensitivity as it says uh, in the focus frame or for what it's actually looking at. Are you going to be looking for what's in the center of what it is you're tracking? Is it going to be automatic or is it going to be um, prioritized or weighted? It's called autofocus weighting. Not weighting as in weighting in time, but autofocus weighted, like actually how much something weighs. In other words, the camera is weighted towards something that is in the front, as opposed to something that is automatic that it is going to choose for tri autofocus tracking, as opposed to something that is centered. Okay, I'm going to choose actually centering because that's typically how I pan and track a moving subject. So we have tracking sensitivity subset, speed tracking sensitivity sub subset, and zone area switching. If you go over to these five presets over here, you'll notice that each one is different. This is multi-purpose subsets. This is the subsets for tracking and speed tracking sensitivity subsets, where it's going to ignore the obstacles, right? Now you'll notice that ignoring obstacles and continuing to track the subject has a speed tracking sensitivity set to zero which over here 
speed tracking sensitivity set to zero means it's going to look for a steady moving object, right? And tracking sensitivity. The delay. Zero is going to look for the closest autofocus. Four is actually going to wait. It's not set all the way to four. I believe it's to five on tracking sensitivity, but it's most of the way over there. Yeah, four. Well, we have five sets. We have zero to four, so it's basically five. Zero, this should be like one, two, three, four, five. That's actually where they should have done it. Instead of zero, one, two, three, four, it doesn't make any difference either way. But now you understand the five presets in camera and the one customizable for AFC Custom. And each one of these has a different profile based upon three subsets, tracking sensitivity, speed tracking, and zone area switching. And that should be the best explanation out there that currently exists for explaining this to you. That way now you know what to do so far as boost mode with your vertical grip. Because boost mode is very important. It doesn't just mean that uh, you know, you're zipping off the frames a lot faster and you're doing 30 minutes of video, it means you're, the camera is actually striking out more often because it has less blackout. You understand autofocus mode, the correct area you need to set, okay? You need to understand where to do that, when to do it, and why to do it, you know? Are you going to be tracking cars? Are you going to be tracking, you know, little rabid puppy dogs that are running around like they're on crack, you know? Now, if um, I'm going to be tracking a... Uh, a uh, car, I'm going to have it set to here. If I got like a rabid chihuahua on crack, I'm going to set my area right here. Pretty simple, huh? Now, if I'm going to be tracking a rabid chihuahua on crack, I'm going to go for erratically moving and accelerating decelerating objects. That would be my setting for uh, chihuahuas on crack, right? <laughs> if I'm going to be shooting motorcycles or cars coming around the track, meow. Now, obviously I'm going to choose uh, AFC custom setting number three. Ignore obstacles and continue to track the subject? Seems pretty understandable. Multi-purpose? Also understandable. You see, even though this camera is advanced, the more specific you are with it to tell it what it is you're trying to shoot, the better it's going to help you. It's already got blazing fast autofocus. But all these things combined are going to help you help the camera have a better keeper rate. In other words, you know, the number of pictures that are actually lost, you take a burst, bram, the keeper rate is going to be really high. Now, autofocus is one thing. That's what you need to understand. Keeper rate is another. It's like a camera could have really fast autofocus and high frames per second. But if the keeper rate is really low, then you haven't done anything but spray and pray. My camera, look at my camera, it really zips them off. Bram. That's what the idiot says. The smart person says, you know, my camera is a little bit slower. Not by much, but the keeper rate is really high. And that, girlfriend, is what is important. You feel me? Do you feel me? I think you do now. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. Bye.